accomplish things in your life. My word will take care of every single issue in your life. And everybody in the body of Christ got an issue. Nobody is exempt. That's what I said. But when you ignore my word, I can't do. Because you block the manifestation for everything that happened in your life, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, for those watching by internet, I know you don't go for that tongue issue, but, you know, hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> hey, Amen. Go to your Bible. Turn your Bibles to Romans, the fifth chapter again. Our foundations. We've been talking about balancing faith and grace. Balancing faith and grace. See, the body of Christ, there's a group that said, well, we just believe in grace and what's going to happen is that, well, God's going to take care of it all. Uh-uh. He's given us grace. Grace makes. Faith takes. And there's on the other side with faith. They don't want to do by grace. They want to believe that they're going to get their faith to get God to do something that he's already done. Only thing God's requiring us is to correspond to what he's already done and faith will bring it in. You, you, you remember the miracle that Jesus did with the fish and Peter Peter, he told Peter to cast down your net for a drought. And Peter said, we toil all night. We take, we take nothing. And I thought Peter ought to know he's a great fisherman. <laughs> right? But <clears throat> on the other hand, think about this. Jesus says, let down your net for a drought. And Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down a net. Jesus said, let down nets. So he was kind of really not really obedient. That's when he said, be merciful when you go up. Understand this. Peter did not see no physical results of fish in that water. But far as Jesus is concerned, God had already provided, and he said, let down the net for a drought. What he did was he corresponded. God always called those things that be not as though they were. We're always in the done realm. It's already done in the spiritual world. What we're trying to do is to get it to come in the physical world. See, I can't, if I say what is all the time, it's going to remain what is. <laughs> you already said that? I keep talking. The only thing you do, your words are building every day, whether they're God's word are words that are contrary to God's word. So you need to ask the Lord, put a watch over my mouth. You know, there, there, there are times, see, and the reason you want to fill up the word with the word, you don't want to, you don't want to re react to people. I, 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 had, I had a lady, there was a situation at work, and um, she didn't like something was done, and she, she started to cuss me out. Now, okay, my flesh might want to turn around and cuss her back too, you know, like, you know. And, and, the, and the Lord just rose up being, I said, honey, I'm going to take care of you personally. And you know, she changed because I didn't react. See, the Bible said love covers a multitude of sin. The Bible said we overcome evil with good. It said we overcome evil with evil. <laughs> Amen. Everybody, Romans 5, uh, verse 2, we can look at. Romans 5, verse 2. Romans 5, verse 2. Hallelujah. Glory to God. By whom also we have access by what? Into what? This grace. Now notice, my access to grace is by faith. Faith coming by hearing and hear the word of God. If you don't hear the word, faith can't come. You ever heard that said to you? So he said, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Now notice, what do we, he, see, we stand in faith in this grace. We stand in the fact that God has already provided everything in grace. It's there. It's there already. And we learned last week, grace and truth came by who? Jesus Christ. Jesus is the person of grace. And you got I think I said a little bit of prophecy. You got folks now that don't, don't, don't value the word. They just want to be entertained. We got people that suffer from compulsive Christianity. Really. Because they, they think all the form, all the dead, and there's nothing wrong with that, but they think all oh, that's God. Uh-uh. Well, David danced before the Lord. Oh, yes, he did. 
But just because I come to church and I don't dance doesn't mean God's not working. But you understand what I'm saying? We, we make everything. We got to do this so, so we can show God's working. No, you don't got to do nothing to show God's work. God's God. He knows how to show himself. Does that make sense to you? Amen. Glory to God. Now, Romans 4, 16. That's the next one I'm going to look at. Just to give you a little bit of review. Most Christians are what you call stuck in the form of Christianity. It's form. It's emotions. You'd you be amazed, some of the people, you go see, see a church sometimes, they're all emotional and they're hollering and everything. Watch what they do at home. Very little. I mean, I can get excited with God, you know, at, at home. Romans um, 4, verse 16. Romans 4, 16. Watch. Therefore, it is a faith that it might be how? By grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Now, we're the seed of Abraham. We're the seed of Jesus Christ. Now, watch. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. We have Abraham's faith. Now, I want to say something real quick. The law was not given for Christians to follow. The law was given to the Jews. And they followed that on a physical level. We are now on a spiritual level. The Bible said we're no longer under the law. The Bible said the law increases sin. It makes you sin more. Somebody tell you don't do something. You know what you're going to do? You're going to wind up going and doing it. My mother tell me, go, go around that corner. I used to live in Newark. Don't go around that corner. Bad guys around that corner. I had to, sooner or later, I got around that corner because she told me not to do it. See, that's what the law does. So it, the Bible said it even increases sin. It makes people sin more because you're trying to do right. You can't, you can't do right by yourself. You can't be right by yourself. You can't do it. It's not going to work. But see, I don't not cheat on my wife because the Bible said, thou should not commit adultery. I don't cheat on my wife because I love God's grace and what Jesus has done to me. I don't want to. See the difference what I'm saying to you? That's what grace is. The Bible says where sin abound, grace much more abound. And so that's what we need, God's grace. And people don't want to hear the grace. They say the grace is a false message. Now, I'm going to say something. I'm not going to call you stupid. You might be watching by internet, but I'm going to say this to you. You are spiritually dumb. Because you call grace a false message. The Bible said grace and truth came by Jesus. And I have the question, are you really saved? Because what you're really saying, I got saved falsely. If it's a false message, even if it's false or not, and you claim Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? See, religious tradition kills God's word. Now, I'm not talking about the sincerity of people. I, I know other people, other than they just are sincere. Don't get me wrong. They love God. Nice people. But Satan don't care about nice. <laughs> he comes to do what? Kill, steal, and destroy. That's why he comes. Amen. Now, amplify. I want to look at the verse Amplify, verse 16. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Bless your holy name. You want me to sit up? Watch this very carefully. Whatever you think, sooner or later you're going to speak. And when you speak it, you will become that. I'll say it again. Whatever you think, you're going to speak it. And sooner or later you will become that. Now, understand. So now, we were talking about the emotions the other week. I got to allow my, the word of God to govern my life. I got to spend time in the word. I got to listen to seeds. I got to listen to messages. I'm not over. You get the message, go back to YouTube and watch it again and again and again until it becomes a part of you. See, everything that happened to you in your life already is a result of how somebody programmed you. 
I, my parents programmed me. They were sincere. My mother thought I was a nut when I got in the Word. She didn't know. But my wife wound up leading her to the Lord. <laughs> See? See, realize this, folks. You can't get caught up about what people think about you or they don't. They ain't paying your bills. They ain't doing none of that. So what do you, what, what do you care? See? You love people. We got to love people. I don't care what state they're in. We got to love them. No matter whatever they do to you, we got to love them. Because that's what the body of Christ does. See, agape, which is God's unconditional love, was imparted on the inside of you. We love people un unconditionally, not based on condition, whether they treat us bad or they don't treat us bad or good. It doesn't matter. We love them. Now, if a person steals from you and they come in your house to steal from you, you still love them. But you just don't let them back in your house again. <laughs> you love them from a distance. Amen? Amen? Amplified. Therefore, the inheritance, the promise, depend entirely on faith that is the confident trust in the unseen God in order that it may be given as an act of grace, this unmerited favor and mercy, so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all. So the promise will be guaranteed. Now, think about this. People want to say grace is power. No, grace is not power. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Walk in the favor. Power will come as a result of grace, but grace is not power. Do you understand that? Grace is not power. I told a guy one day, and in the meantime, you could turn in your Bibles because I want to get into this today. I want you to turn to, um, while you can get that up, well, that's the, turn to Titus 2. And, and we're going to look at verse 11. Last week we learned that Paul said, if any man preach any other gospel but the gospel of grace, let him be a what? Let him be a curse. The gospel is the gospel of grace. Everybody said the gospel, the gospel is the gospel of grace. And that's what, that's what, ladies and gentlemen, that's what the church needs. That's what we all need. Now, Remember I said before, everybody got a what? Everybody got an issue. Everybody. I got issues too, I deal with. Might not be your, your issue. <laughs> All we have to say, this is, this is the church. If you do something wrong, they want to condemn you because you did that wrong. Now watch this very carefully. Your sin, the sin you did, you did a 50, but I only did a 40, so I'm better than you. Cut it out. Please, cut it out. Cut it out. We're not called the, called the judge of the people. We're called the pray for other people. You see your brother slipping, he's messing up. You pray for, pray the Ephesians prayer. I pray the eyes and understanding become further in the light and that God will give him revelation and knowledge of the word. That's what he needs more revelation from God. Because he got God, man. All that other stuff going to dry up. Amen? Now watch this. For by, great, by the grace of God that brings salvation had appeared to what? Has appeared to what? All men, verse 12, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live solely righteous and godly in the presence of this, of this world. Watch verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now that's what we're looking for. Grace. Now, I'm just taking through the Bible, scripture by scripture. I'm not giving you my opinion. Amen? Romans 8.2. Romans 8.2. Amen. I love Jesus. He is mine. The banner with me is love. Oh, this... One day, I was talking to somebody, and they were going to try to get a debate, a religious debate. I don't get any religious debate. You know what I told them? I said, if this is a lie, what I'm doing, it's about the best one I ever had, so leave me alone. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Romans 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the what? 
Law of what? The law produces sin and death. Now, it, it, it amazes me, like I told you before earlier, that Christians, that they're trying to walk by the Mosaic law, which you're not even entitled to walk by. It wasn't even for you. It was for the Jewish people, not for us. What did he just say? For the Lord, the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, I'm not going to get into that Deuteronomy. Do you realize, if you read Deuteronomy 8, chapter it talks about all these blessings that come upon you. If you do this, you do that. But if you don't do this, okay, this is going to happen to you. That's going to happen to you. And you miss one of them, you still condemn. Well, wh why did God give them the law? Because they kept, on want, they, they kept on saying, Lord, we can do this, we can do this. That's the people that are doing works for God, trying to do for God. And they kept on, and God said, okay, I'm going to give you about 600 of them. He gave them 600 of them, which he knows they couldn't fulfill. Only one person ever fulfilled the law. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. He came to fulfill. That's when he died. He said, it is fulfilled. And he fulfilled it so we didn't have to. Ain't that great? I mean, think about this. You, I mean, you, you'll be condemned. If you stopped over Burger King and got a pork sandwich, you, you, you'll be condemned. Now, Satan, watch this very careful. When you mess up, this is very careful. Don't allow Satan to tell you it's not going to work because you committed a sin. Because a lot of people that Jesus ministered to and healed, they were sinners. <laughs> like that, chew on that one. How he tricks you is this. He brings the guilt and condemnation in you and make you feel bad. And when the guilt and condemnation come, what you need to do is speak what the word says. There's no condemnation to me in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteous of God in Christ. That's who I am. I'm royalty. I'm a kinky. Throw that back at the dummy. Now, you might not feel like that. Emotions might be going back. That's the time you got to do it. Let me say this to you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just take, go, go to, when you got a problem, just go to that word and start speaking that word. You might not feel like, sometimes, oh, I, I don't want y'all to speak no word now. I don't want to do no word now. Do you understand what I'm going through right now? I don't want no word. I, hey, baby, the word is what you need. And the devil is bringing guilt to me. You don't need no word. That's the thing you need. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I mean, that's like a guy get, get out in the ocean. And the guy throws the thing they throw out so you can help you, you know. And he says, I don't need that. Well, what, if he don't, he don't need it, guess what happened? And he can't swim. He's in bad shape. He's going to die. But I bet you, he started going now. He's going to call. Throw that thing now. Throw it down. That's what you need to look at the word. It's the most valuable thing you can have in your life. And it's unfortunate, this is a religion has messed things up. So people, because a lot of times people, I've been, they've been around religion, they think I know. And the worst thing you can ever do in your life is to think you know. Every time we, I turn around, I see God coming up with something because I spend time with him. You see what I'm saying? Spend time with God. He's all, you, you, you forever grow. I'll be growing until Jesus comes still. Ever growing. I don't know all. And you know something else? If I did something, I said something wrong, like some things way back in faith, I said, I have no problem admitting I was wrong. I said that wrong. Why? Because the Holy Spirit working on me too, just like he's working on you. The Holy Spirit is always, everybody said the Holy Spirit is always working on us. <laughs> Ain't it? What kind of minister you? Look at you. Got some jeans on in church. Shocking you. Saying that shame. Witchcraft. Dummy. See, they, they think wearing a suit make you holy or wearing a robe make you holy. See what I'm saying? I know some guys don't know whether they male or female wearing robes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And almost switch up to the pulpit. Now, I'm not against gay people. Understand this. I love them. But see, that act destroys their lives. They're saved. They're going to heaven. Because they're not going to heaven based on their sin. They're going to heaven based on what Jesus done for them. 
Thank the Lord. But it's no good for their lives because what have, most of them don't live long. Amen. Y'all okay? Can y'all handle that? Second Corinthians 12.1. Now watch this very careful. The Apostle Paul. I believe that the Apostle Paul always spoke who he was. Now watch this very careful. When the people messed up and they sinned, Paul didn't go to them, you sinner, you ought to be shaming yourself. You, you dirty something. What you even stepping foot in the church now? Didn't your mama teach you better? No, Paul said, don't you realize you're the temple of the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit lives in you. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Oh, to see, see, see the change, how you do the people. Don't you know, you see somebody messed up? That's all right. You messed up. Don't you know the temple of the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you and he's there to help you? It's all right, brother. Now, how, how does that change things? Instead of, huh, shoot. I saw her last night over Cozy Corner Bar. And she stood there in church this morning. Look at her. Got that red hat on, too. You know, hey, she's something. See? That's not our assignment. And if you saw her in Cozy Corner Bar, that's, that's her business, not, not ours. Now, if I saw her in Cozy Corner, she's doing something she ain't supposed to do. You know, God sometimes will have, you, have, have something you minister to, might tell you to go into Cozy Corner and minister to somebody. It's like, oh, I saw them in there. You don't know whether they were in there missing, minister. My spiritual father's wife, okay? I mean, she's called my spiritual mom. Hey, she, go, she goes in the strip clubs. Take a team and go in the strip clubs and minister to people. See, everything is not always the way it appears. See, your relationship, now the Bible says avoid appearance of evil, but sometimes people don't really realize. Jesus hung out with the sinners. Yo, y'all got that. I said, Jesus hung out with the sinners. Well, sometimes, sometimes you got to be around sinners. You go to work, you're around sinners. What, are you going to stop working now? Because there's sinners there. I want to go to work with it. it's all the Christians are there all the time, you know. I had a girl like that. I want to get out of that job so I can get, get away from them sinners. I said, why? That's why you there? See, and you don't got to go, you don't got to go in there and go into work and everyone, praise the Lord, hallelujah, shake up a lot of us please, don't. <laughs> there's, there's a place for everything, Amen. Like I told, I, I told you the story about in New York. I mean, I was, I was, I was kind of getting the Holy Spirit wanted to pray. And I knew it was going to come out loud. And I said, Holy, I said, Lord, people are going to think I'm a nut walking down New York in the street speaking in tongues. And I would have never thought of that. He said, take your cell phone and put it to your ear. I said, okay. Hey, they, they didn't know what I was talking. They thought I was talking to somebody. Who, they, they, they don't know. But guess what? Me and the Holy Ghost was having communion. And he found a way for me to have communion instead of doing stuff that people don't understand yet. See? We got to like, let me say something. Christian, we got to get a life. And he wants you to enjoy life. Enjoy life. Don't get off. I was telling somebody the other day about that movie that they had years ago that Jesus was homosexual. And you ought to, you ought to see. I said, Why? Why am I going to give them some money to go see that? Support that. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus knows who he is. You, you understand what I'm saying to you? We got, we, we got to learn how to get a life, enjoy life. Well, Pat, I heard about this minister. He went, he went to this movie, and I was there. I got up and left because the woman pulled her clothes off in the movie. But this other, he, he didn't get up and left. I wouldn't have got up and left either. I paid for that movie. I got my wife with me. I'm not a pervert. Now, I'm talking about if they have a scene or something. Now, I'm not going to get all out of the way. Oh, my God. Please. It's in the word. Sometimes you see it on television. And there, there, there was a time, excuse me, saying, they would, they would never show a woman with an underwear and a bra. Now they just let it all hang out, just about. And you're going to run past these things. But don't let the devil put you in bondage because these things happen. We're in a world that's evil. 
and the world is doing their thing. Amen? Well, sometimes being a Christian, you got to, especially man, sometimes you got to learn how to run. I'll say it again, run. I was in Atlanta. My wife wasn't on the elevator. This girl got on him. He said, boy, she was fine. Woo, goodness. And she, she started giving me the look, too. So I, I was supposed to get off at, the, um, I think what it was. I was supposed to go up to the 12th floor. I got off at number four and let her go. You know what I'm saying to you? You see stuff because, see, sometimes the enemy will magnify stuff worse than it, great, make it greater than it is. And those temptations are real. But see, if nobody ever taught how to deal with the temptations, what to do, they're going to hear, well, that's just, a, that's just a man thing. No, that's not a man thing. That's a lust thing. Man thing. But I got to show my manhood. Doing that is not showing your manhood. You hear what I say to you? Doing that is not showing your manhood. You know what a man is? So those who watch it, ever define what a man is. A real a man, you might be a male. You're not a man because you can produce a child. A man is a person that's following God's word. That's a real man. That takes a real man. You're not a man because you muscle build. That doesn't make you a man. You're still a male. And you got dogs and cats, male and female, but they're not a man. That's not what makes you a man. A man is a man that follow almighty God. That's what you call a real man. See, I had to learn how to be a real man by the word. Because I didn't know how. My father died when I was seven years old. I wasn't taught that, how to be a man. I had to learn from the word. And still, as a father... Fathers make mistakes. Everybody make mistakes. Don't go into guilt because you made mistakes. You didn't do this right with the kids. Hey, everybody grow. Next generation, you could can, can make it better. That's what it's all about. Each generation getting better. Amen. I mean, I, some things I know now, I might have handled different with my kids. But I'm not going to go into guilt because I didn't do it a certain way now. Hey, I was still growing. Okay. When I came on the scene, too, guess what? My parents didn't share certain things with me. Okay, guess what? I didn't know, but I can't turn around and blame them because they, they didn't share this with me. They didn't know either. And guess what? Some of their mom and dad probably didn't know certain things either. We're forever learning, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Now watch this. Paul says, it is not as speed as me, doubt to glory. I will come to a vision and revelation of the Lord. Verse 2. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago. Whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. Why did he say that? Paul never met Jesus personally, like the disciples did. He said, whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Notice there's a third heaven. There's this lower atmosphere. There's where the stars is in heaven where God is. The street. Amen. Next verse. And I knew such a man, whether in the body, out of the body, I cannot tell. God know it. Verse 4. How that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable speakable words, which is not lawful for a man to utter. Verse 5. Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmity. Notice there, he says, I'm going to take glory in the infirmities when it comes my way. I'm going to take glory in it. Now, the infirmity is not glorious to you naturally. You're going through something. You're going through hurt. It's not glorious. It's real. But he said, I'm going to glory in it. Now he's going to see why he said he's going to take glory in it. Next verse, 6. But though I would desire to, to glory, I should not be a fool. For I will say the truth. Now, what's the truth? The word of God? Would you agree with that? But now I forbear lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he hears of me, verse 7, above, now watch this very careful, above all, would I say that? And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of what? Revelation. Notice here, the abundance of revelation 
There was given me a thorn in the flesh. A thorn is hurt. A thorn is emotional hurt. A thorn is pressure on your flesh. A, that thorn is not, not sickness, necessarily. It's not sickness. It's pressure on your flesh. Amen? You could have went to work, had a bad day at work. Pressure on your flesh. Boston, give you the raise you felt you should get. Pressure on the flesh. Amen? Now watch. He said, I was giving me a thorn in the flesh. Now watch this. The messenger of who? Satan. To do what? Buffet me. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Now throw that one on the amplifier. Watch this. Give you a little more clarity. Because of the surpassing greatness and extraordinary nature of revelation, which I received from God, for this reason, to keep me from thinking of myself as important, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a message of Satan to torment and harass me and to keep me from exalting myself. See, in other words, understand, what Satan was trying to do is to try to put pressure on Paul so, but it, so that he would not pay attention to the abundance of revelation he got. To get him to take his eyes off the word, ladies and gentlemen. And Satan comes for the abundance of what? Revelation. He comes after the word. That's what he said. He don't care about you. I can keep you away from the word. I can keep you at home sitting on your couch, not coming, coming to hear no word. Talking about the only day I get off on Sunday, fine. He, you, you exactly what the devil wants you to be. And you are listening to him and don't even know it. You ain't listening to God. Let me say something to you. I don't want nobody. If you ain't around the word, don't come pray for me, please. I want somebody praying around the word and how to pray. Because more than likely, your, your believability is not but so good. You're just doing it a form. Because a lot of people pray in the form. Oh, that's what we pray. We got to pray. Yeah, we got to pray. They don't believe, even believe what they're praying. Amen. Now, next verse, go to verse 8. Back to King James, please, Paul. Thank you. But this thing, he said, I besought the Lord tripe, trice, three times, that it might depart. Now, he's seeking God to get rid of this pressure, get rid of this thorn off of me. But watch what he, God says to him. Jesus said to him. And he said unto me, my grace is what? Sufficient. Everybody said, God's grace is sufficient for me. God's grace has provided everything I need in life. It's there. I said, okay, Lord. The ground already has tomatoes in the ground. The ground already has corn in the ground. The ground already has watermelon down in the ground. You don't see the watermelon. You don't see the corn. The ground is waiting for someone to correspond with some seed. And the Bible said the seed is the word. Just like a farmer correspond with seed to the ground and water it, you should do the same thing with the word seed, get the seed and also water the seed, so guess what? You can get your manifestation. But if the farmer sits back and says, I want some watermelon, whatever it is, corn or whatever, and he sits back and sits on his porch and says, Lord, I want some watermelon. And the Lord would say to him, it's already in the ground. Put some seed. And the ground is howling out. Give me some seed so I can give you some tomatoes. Give me some seed, I'll give you some corn. Just give me some seed <coughs> and water me. <coughs> Does that help you? <coughs> Try to break it down so that we understand. I know religious layers sometimes it takes time to come off. And I understand people, you know, they go, you go to your local grocery store and you know, it's easy because you just 
put your card out and put your money out, and you got your corn, <laughs> you got your watermelon, <laughs> but somebody had to farm it. Now watch this. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Woo! Even though you're weak, God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, put on the whole arm of God. You may do what? Stand against the wiles or trickeries of the devil. Put it on. Wear it all the time. Even though you don't feel like wearing it. Watch this. So watch what Paul said. Most gladly, therefore, will I glory in my infirmity. Why am I going to take glory in my infirmity? That the power of Christ, that word crystal Christ means the anointed one is anointed, may rest where? Upon me, up on you. Now, the anointing is in you, abides in you, but you want it to come up on you. You want the physical effect, it be on you. You're not just a human being. You are a supernatural being. Hey, Pastor, I'm supernatural. See, now, you know, you, you, see your, your, your flesh don't, uh, you know, it, but it's, it's supernatural. Verse, I, I think that's, look at 10, Mr. I think, I think that's it on there. Yeah, yes, verse 10. Therefore, watch Paul say, I take pleasure in infirmity. Woo! What did, what did, what did Paul say doing? Oh, here comes some, here comes some hurt now. But I got something, I'm going to take care of it. When it comes, I'm going I'm, I'm to be ready for you. You know, when I was in the military, they trained us. If your, your weapon jam up, how to get it back and clean it real quick and put it back together real quick. And then if, if that didn't work, they'll show you how to kill them, kill them with a knife. But you'd be ready. Y'all heard I say it to you? That's how you ought to look at the devil. You, we're in the war, ladies and gentlemen. Whether I want to be in that war, I'm in the war. When I said to Jesus, my Lord, I'm in the war. There's a war going on. Therefore, will I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproach, woo, in necessities, in persecution, in the crest for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I'm strong. Woo, goodness. When I'm weak, then I'm strong. You might not feel strong, but watch this. When you're saying your word, that's when that creative power book is so important, you confess every day. When you, you keep saying that, and guess what happens? Sooner or later, you'll feel less strength in your physical body. See, the first priority on your list is the word of God. You know the word is more important than your job? Because let me ask you a question. If you lose your job, who the first person you're going to call on? Okay. Now, he's, he, to some people, he's only important because they lost their job. He's supposed to be the number one because he's the provider. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. I think I got time for one more. Yeah. Yeah, I want to deal with this because we get to do it next week. Galatians 5, verse 4. See, because the reason I keep bringing the law up, because people, 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 they're, 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 hung, up on, they're hung up on the law. We got so many layers of religion, it's, that's when you get teaching, it takes time to get that off of you because it, it took time to get it off of me. Ye years ago, years ago, I never forget when I was first fairly new in the word. I guess a few years we went. I went, was the pastor there. I never forget. My wife says to me, "Said honey, honey, she said God's going to do something," and we were still growing, and and it just came out of me. God's not going to do nothing. He's already done it. Like, where did where that come from? But see, and even not knowing grace, that he's already done everything. He's already provided. And we thought we was using faith. We was getting God to do something. We weren't getting God to do nothing. He's already done it. We just correspond to what he's already done. Didn't know that. So then what happened, what happened was then people started coming and teaching messages that their faith was so great. They, they didn't really realize God's the one that, that did it. But they didn't really, they start putting stuff in the body of Christ, teaching condemnation. This is not working because you're doing this wrong. And sometimes I was doing something wrong. I thought that was wrong. I, I wasn't praying enough. I'm not doing enough. You know, you got you to pray more. So I had somebody tell me, oh, you got to be, you got to be spending all day in prayer, praying every, every minute of the day, Pastor, every day. I mean, what for? Are you praying every day like that? I pray every day, and I stay, I stay in an attitude of prayer all the time. It's, see, it's about an attitude. 
Let me, let me, let me ask you this question. You might pray before you go eat your food, but naturally, you sitting out eating your dinner, are you, are, are you chopping on a steak, a piece of chicken? She could put out the most sin when I'm praying. No, you're not. You're eating your chicken. It's time to eat some chicken now. It's not time to pray. We got to have things in order. And you're not careful saying to, saying to bring guilt. Other Christians will bring all this guilt on you. You got to do more. You got to do more. You're not, you're not doing enough. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, if you are babe in Christ, you just learned, you might only get up and pray 10 minutes a day because that's all you can handle here. But you keep spending time with God. You'll want to pray more. See, back to what I said to you, you'll want to more. Instead of I tell you, you gotta, you're trying to do what this person, I did this, so you got to go do what I did so you can get results. Uh-uh, don't work that way. God, the Holy Spirit's on the inside of you. He knows exactly where each one of us are at in our lives. You got what I'm saying to you? What did I tell you, Turner? Yeah, Galatians 5, 5, 4, yeah. Watch this. Christ has become a no effect to you. Woo! That's a heavy state. Why? Whosoever you are justified by the law, you are falling from grace. So when you follow the law, guess what? You're falling from grace. You're not operating right. You, you fall from grace when you operate the law and you make Christ of no effect in your life. Woo! That's some. Some people want to hear that one. And people think, because they worship God on a Saturday, it means, you know, God don't care what day you worship him. Matter of fact, in Galatians, the Bible says, let no man judge you in the Sabbath day, any kind of day at all. Jesus tried to tell the, tell the Pharisees that. You got me, you got the Sabbath. <laughs> hey, so your Sabbath be every day. I, I, I had, had a guy, I'm a close, but I had a guy. He loved the word here, but he's all hung up on the day. So he's going to throw everything away because of a day. Throw Jesus away because of a day. Because he thinks he's, he's doing something for God by worshiping that particular day. It has nothing to do with none of that. And you got ministers on TV making all this bitch issue about a day. This day is everything. Why? Because they're still following the law. I'm not calling them, but they're following the law. And that's what the law does. Amen? Well, y'all blessed today? Every head bowed, every eye closed. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you that this word is germinating in the hearts of each and every one. We give you glory, give you honor and praise right now. In Jesus' name, amen.